Welcome to Electro Online. Now we made a very small change from the previous example. Here in the denominator we have a square minus x square instead of a square plus x square. So if we think about 1 over a square minus x square, we can actually write that as the sum of two fractions. So let me show you what I mean with that. If we take 1 over a square minus x squared, we can say that is equal to 1 over a minus x times a plus x, which means that this can now be written as the sum of the two fractions, a over a minus x plus b over a plus x. And so this is the technique of partial fractions. So now all we have to do is figure out what a and b are equal to, and then we can write this in terms of the sum of two smaller fractions or simple fractions that we can actually integrate quite easily. So let's go ahead and figure out what a and b are. So what we can do is if we multiply both the numerator on both sides by a minus x times a plus x, on the left side we get 1, and on the right side, since a minus x cancels out, we get a times a plus x, and here, since a plus x cancels out, we get b times a minus x. So we simply multiplied both sides of this fraction, if we ignore this side for a moment, by the product of a minus x times a plus x. So the left side becomes 1 and the right side becomes equal to this. Now we have to solve that for a and b. So we can say here that on the left side the constant 1 is equal to a times a plus b times a. And since there's no x term on the left side, we can say that 0 is equal to ax minus bx. Or, actually, I don't even need to write the x. I can simply say that this is equal to, since there's no x terms on the left side, I can simply say that this is a minus b. And then we can say that a is equal to b. And since a, a is equal to b, we can plug that in here. So we say that 1 is equal to a times a plus a times a, or 1 is equal to 2aa, or a is equal to 1 over 2a. So since a is equal to 1 over 2a, that means that's also equal to b, since a and b are equal to one another. Which means that we can write what's inside the integral sign here as the sum of those two fractions with a and b equal to 1 over 2a. So this now becomes equal to the integral of 1 over 2a divided by, let's see here, a minus x plus 1 over 2a divided by a plus x and the whole thing times dx. So we simply rewrote this as the sum of the two fractions with a and b equal to 1 over 2a, which of course can be factored out. And let's see, this becomes equal to 1 over 2a times the integral of 1 over a minus x plus 1 over a plus x times dx, and those can be readily integrated. Now on the left side, since we have a minus x in the denominator, this becomes equal to 1 over 2a times the negative natural log of a minus x plus the natural log of a plus x, and we still want a constant of integration. And then if I reverse orders, this becomes the natural log of a plus x minus the natural log of a minus x, so we can write as a fraction. So this can be written as 1 over 2a times the natural log of a plus x minus the natural log of a minus x plus the constant of integration. And so now when we have the natural log of a minus the natural log of b, that simply can be written as the natural log of a over b. So this can be written as 1 over 2a times the natural log of the quantity a plus x over a minus x. And if you don't like the absolute value signs, you can take those away. You can say, well, this can be written as 1 over 2a times the natural log of a plus x over a minus x when you stipulate that a squared should be larger than x squared so we cannot have a negative in the denominator because we don't want to take the natural log of a negative number since that's not defined. So here's the answer. 
is simply 1 over 2a times the natural log of a plus x divided by a minus x if this was your initial integral. And that's how it's done.